please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome to Taking Stock, the show where we take stock of the week gone by. I'm Surabhi Upadhyay and with me as always is Anuj Singhal. Uh, Anuj, uh, interesting week. I mean, we've managed to put on, what, 1.5% for the week. But for those who were thinking all-time highs, big breakout, that's not really happened. So, breakout, that's not really happened. So, what's the clear takeaway then? Yeah, the clear takeaway is that the market broke out, Surabhi, and is expanding. And, you know, on Friday, it had a bad news in terms of North Korea, but again moved on. I think for me, the big takeaway was that uh, the, the trading range, which was there for almost one week or, or one month, that's gone now. Uh, and this market clearly has made higher low and higher high. The mid-cap and junior are already at new highs. And I think it's a matter of when and not if the Nifty makes a new high. And that too, a uh, much higher all-time highs. All-time highs normally are taken away with gap. Because as you move closer to the all-time high, you see a bit of profit taking like it happened this week. So I think maybe on Monday or Tuesday, one day I think the gap would take out the all-time high. But the other key takeaway for me was that this week belonged to laggards. Uh, you know, you started to see a lot of you know, stocks like Pharma stocks started to rally. Uh, Sun Pharma was up 11% this week, I think. Tata Motors was up 8%. Tata Power was up about 8%. Uh, so that, I think, was the other trend. And the one trend which has been uh, stagnant for last uh, many months now, continuous DI buying, and that too huge, mm -hmm. uh, more than negating the big FI cell number that we are seeing. Uh, so for me, you know, I think uh, the bulls should be happy and they should feel that... Uh, uh, it's a matter of when and not if the all-time highs are taken. And more importantly, the broader markets, they continue to make new highs. Okay, so, uh, well, all in all, a good week for the Bulls. Well, let's bring in our guest now. Joining in this week to discuss the market action further is Basant Maheshwari of Basant Maheshwari Wealth Advisors. Thanks so much uh, for being with us, Basant. Well, to start off with, I mean, as Anuj is explaining, the market has uh, done quite well uh, to take those incremental steps and get towards that all-time high. Um, what do you make of the setup right now? These geopolitical issues, North Korea, etc., uh, will they prevent a breakout or is a breakout just a matter of time? Uh, I mean, uh, if, we, if we look at it, the market uh, seems to have shrugged off the North Korean worry to a large extent, but the worry remains. The bottom line is we cannot plan for this because... If I were Kim Jong-un and I had, a I had a button on a missile and I could just press it and it would hit, say, Washington, D.C. in the next one hour, would I be willing to do it and risk myself uh, not living in this earth for the next, after 30 minutes? So I wouldn't do it in spite of the fun and the pain and the agony that I would like to see all around. Because if I love my life and, and I'm Kim Jong-un, I wouldn't do it. So I think all this is posturing and the market after these, you know you know what happens, it's, it's more like a Sheraya, Sheraya thing and then on the reverse side. So if Kim Jong-un gives us four, five, six, seven missile tests, then you're going to say, oh, yeah, he's just celebrating Diwali one month in advance. So we're going to shrug that off. But on the other side, on our market side, there are not too many sectors that are showing earnings growth, except for a couple of sectors here and there. IT is in a limbo. Uh, pharma sector seems to be having its pain. And uh, except for the FMCG and a couple of things. So when IT and pharma and the PSU banking, they're not supporting the market at all. So I don't know how the Nifty is going to rally, but selectively stock pickers should do well you know uh, so be the bottom line to see is an investor in a bull market is pretty much like a teenager in college so before you know it three years are over and then you then see oh college is over but what have i learned nothing so all investors should focus on making money making long-term investments and then assuming that over three four five years they would have uh, created some sort of capital for themselves instead of trying to have too much fun by buying Tom today and selling Dick tomorrow and buying Harry tomorrow and then selling something else day after. So I think the focus should be on earnings-led companies and that's the way to plan for it. Because you would not know how the bull market would end and then, you know, these things don't come back again very quickly. Okay, Basant, in that case, let's discuss the theme of the week, uh, power stocks, because of, you know, what was happening with merchant power rates. Uh, do you like anything in this space? No, obviously these companies did well. Like, like for example, there's this talk of the bullet train and how BHEL would benefit and how BML would get the orders. 
But these are not really sustainable two, three, four year stories where the market would go because because markets normally look at one option or the other. So power they would do well. Sometimes some infra company would do well here and there. But that's not how normal investors, long term investors would like to play it because power worldwide. I mean, even in India, it's a regulated sector. You can't charge more. So when you increase rates or so, you know, these are more of a. Uh, a jump kind stocks, you make 10-20% and you move out. They're not investment stocks, they're more of trading bets, positional trades if I might call it. So we don't look at power sector as such, we, we, we don't look at them. But on the overall scale, I think the market is really short of earnings-led growth. All the growth that we see is because people are pumping in money and because the markets go, people are pumping in more money. So that should exist, that should continue, but beyond a point, I can't make out a case, a long-term case for a secular-led bull market like we had in 2003 to 2008. So that doesn't seem to be coming anytime soon. Okay, let's uh, get Ashwini Gujral also in this conversation then. Uh, Ashwini, uh, good to have you on the show as always. Uh, your thoughts on how the week panned out and whether this market is ready for the next phase of expansion now? Well, we've broken out of 99.50 now you know normal expansionary breakout means closing at the highs of the week etc and you know gaining very rapidly in the first phase that obviously is not happening because you are hardly 100 points from the breakout level but uh, whether or not uh, you are able to get past uh, you know 10150 depends on two stocks one is reliance and the other is hdfc bank if both these guys are able to push their weight and uh, you know some large buying comes in then i think we should break on the upside but in all spaces uh, you know there is uh, equal pressure on the other side like in banks icici state bank while they have rallied but uh, they haven't really covered any new ground and every day there is some sort of bad news that hits so uh, yes the breakout lasts uh, important bit to see is uh, 9950 should hold on but overall, I think uh, the juice is still in the mid caps. It does not look like a very large, uh, you know, large cap breakout is happening. Okay, um, Basant, I'm just coming back to that point that you were making, obviously you're not at all convinced about this, you know, uh, sporadic power rally of sorts that we've had. Uh, so I'm guessing no BHELs, no Tata powers for you. But what about, for instance, a stock like LNT, which has had a good run, which is, you know, pretty much at its 52 week high. Uh, would just to be a bit of a contrarian in the portfolio, is that something you'd look at? Absolutely. LNT, I think, is a bellwether stock. We don't own it, obviously. But but for somebody who's looking at 12-15% consolidated return over the next two, three, four years, and he wants to be safer with the large caps, I think LNT presents a good opportunity. And it's also a good way to play India. But then you have to understand that LNT has been a leader between 2003 to 2008. So assuming LNT to again go back to its own magical days would be too much i think it's good for 15 16 percent kind of a growth and nothing more and beyond that but but the real excitement and like a broken record i keep coming and saying the same thing and that's why i'm so embarrassed to talk to you all the time about the same thing is in the financials it's in the consumer space is in the underlying theme of organized going in favor of the unorganized so i think these are the three big themes that are happening right now so investors looking for long-term capital appreciation should focus on these kind of players. So, um, you know, Basant, you have spoken about stocks like Bajaj Finance, Gru Finance in the past as well. You've liked housing finance traditionally, but there are some people in the market perhaps saying that maybe things are getting a little frothy, concerns about that, you know, the LAP side of the book. Um, does that concern you or worry you or are you still okay buying fresh? No, I mean, uh, two or three things there. Valuations don't drop unless the earnings drop. So as long as the growth is there, growth is like music and valuations are the chairs. So you don't have to sit on a chair unless the music stops. So if the growth stops, then you have to look for a chair to sit. So I think for the moment growth would be there. And so if you're analyzing any NBFC, any bank, you have to look at it this way. As long as the growth is there, the management is telling you, hey, we don't have an asset quality, asset quality problem. But the moment there's an asset quality problem, managements would know about it three, four, five, six quarters in advance. What they do is they cut down the growth. So a company growing at 40 would suddenly grow at 20, 25, because then at that point, they would be worried about recovering the money. So the moment the growth 
falters, the management isn't directly telling you we are not too sure about the asset quality. So I am waiting for that. That doesn't seem to be coming down any anytime soon. And whether they're doing LAP or whether they are doing a housing loan or construction finance, bottom line is if they have managed to keep their asset quality in order, the, the net NPA at around 0.25 or thereabouts, I think it's all fine because Bajaj Finance, for example, obviously we have a holding there, so but not a recommendation really. Uh, I, I heard they are funding you for a root canal. So, I mean, you don't expect some, if you, if you default, you don't expect somebody to come and extract the tooth back and take it. So it's all like that and that's how it's supposed to be. And bull markets are supposed to be frothy. If there's no froth, there's no bull market. You've got to be crazy. You've got to be paying top dollar. Somebody has to get foolish. Somebody has to sell his wife's bangles to put money into stocks. All that happens and maybe we'll be a part of it in some way or the other. That's how it is. Okay, some would say that maybe financing for uh, you know tooth, uh, the root canal could be actually one of those. Uh, that's interesting. I heard it for the first time. But uh, Ashwini, your thoughts on uh, the NBFC space? Do you see that remain the leader uh, going forward? Uh, and your medium-term stock calls as well uh, uh, as we go forward? I just had an implant port, so maybe I should have used it. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need Ashwini. Okay. You you are you are too rich, right? <laughs> you, I mean, you you need finances for better things in life. Well, if it's six months for for nothing, you know it works. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Edelweiss did extremely well today, so probably uh, that is a buy with a stop of 268, target of 310, and uh, HDFC Bank continues to push forward slowly, but uh, you know again into fresh blue sky territory. This is a buy with a stop of. 1830 target of 1900 and LNT finance and holdings that uh, pushed up strongly so that is a buy with a stop of 203 target of 218 okay let's do one thing we'll take a break up next we'll get you some more uh, uh, views from uh, Basant Maheshwari also Ashwini will answer some of the queries on Twitter as we take that break let's hear out some market opinion that we got through the week generally people have a tendency investors or traders have got a tendency to go with what is top the board what is fancy it what some uh, fancy names, some operators buy in the market or investors buy in the market. Actually, we should, investors should be, individual investors especially, should go much beyond. We have got hundreds of stocks in the mid caps and small caps, which are in a turnaround path. So this is a season in India where you can see a lot of these companies are go, moving to the next segment, to the next orbit. That is where you make five times, ten times money. It isn't as if there aren't opportunities available. I would look at banks right now. So I will be looking at both private sector corporate lending, lenders, even some PSUs on a select basis, but it's more a trade uh, than a structural play. I've never been a fan of PSU, but it looks like there is an opportunity for a trade. So we have had uh, fabulous markets uh, since the beginning of the year. Most markets in Asia are up 25% in dollar terms. And we also had fabulous markets in Europe. Italy, in dollar terms, is up 30%, and many other markets are up between 20 and 25%. So we had very good moves in stocks. We had also a strong performance in gold, and bonds have also performed reasonably well. They didn't go down as many had predicted. Welcome back, you're watching Taking Stock and uh, it's a week where the market had a bit of a breakout that we are taking stock of. Uh, Basant Maheshwari and Ashwini Gujarat still with us. Uh, Basant, we have spoken about financials. The sector that moved this week was pharma and some stocks made big move. Sun Pharma, of course, but DB's Labs really was your stock of the week. Uh, uh, what's your view on the sector? I is the worst over? Uh, let, 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 let me share with you a small analysis that we do all the time. A high quality blue chip normally doesn't fall more than 40-50%. High quality blue chip. So all these pharma names, the top quality, they're all high quality blue chips and they've all fallen 40-50% from the all time highs. So it, unless the company is folding up, like in the case of Unitech or whatever, they don't fall more than 40-50%. So they, they roll down 30-40% from the top. So I think if you have patience if you, and if you're not too much worried about quarterly returns and 
performance every quarter, every week, every month. I think pharma should be looked at, but you start from the top-notch companies, you start from the blue chips. So that's the way to go about it, and you, you can just take the top-end names. Not a recommendation, I'm just telling you for the sake of analysis. I mean, they could take a Sun Pharma, a Lupin or whatever, and just buy an or Orbindo. I mean, it went to about, I think, 550, now it's back at 700, 750, thereabouts. So you just buy these stocks and you keep them because they have fallen 40% from the top, 45% from the top. These companies don't go down to zero. They are world-class companies, and they're going to get their way back. But the big bounce isn't coming very soon because they've had six years of terrific growth. So uh, after six years of growth, you fall to the ground and you lay there, you catch your breath, you take some rest and then they'd walk. They'd never run again. That's what I feel because they ran so hard. So they'll just walk. Okay. Wonder if uh, walking is going to suit the more bullish investors then. Well, coming back to the overall market view and, you know, uh, the same question. Can we have a bigger move above the all-time highs? There's also that call that we are hearing, uh, Basan, that maybe third quarter will be the quarter when the real earnings recovery, the pop is going to happen, double-digit growth. Is that a view you subscribe to? No, I don't think. I mean, uh, I'm not a proponent of the third quarter earnings coming back. I think uh, earnings would take some time to come back. And plus, markets would go into an all-time high. But you know, the kind of all-time high bullishness that markets show, we are not seeing that. You know, normally you see a market just gathering momentum and it goes up and some stocks hitting circuits. And you know, that kind of frenzy is not there. And it's good it's not there. But all this is happening basis a select pocket and a lot of money. So I don't think earnings are going to come very soon because if we were supposed to recover, I mean, you know, the PSU banks, the NPAs tell you that earnings are not coming because you don't find banks having an NPO problem which is aggravating when the economy is recovering. So if the economy were to recover, the PSU banks' NPA problems would have actually subsided. That's not happening. So the best way to check the economy, like I do, because we don't go so much into numbers, is to check the NPA profile of the PSU banks. So Ultimately, it's going to recover because earnings is basically a base case scenario. So if your base keeps going down every year, obviously, there will be some year where, you know, you'll find your earnings going up 20%, 25%, 30%. But that's more of a base case scenario than a CAGR exercise that we are so fond of looking at all the time. All right, Basan, thanks a lot for your time. Have a good weekend. That's the candid view, as always, from Basant Maheshwari. Let's uh, address some Twitter queries then. Uh, Ashwini, uh, the first one is uh, on BEML, a stock which has been in an uptrend, though of late consolidated a bit. Uh, our viewer Prashant wants to know if it's the right time to buy. Well, BEML had a very sharp rally from 1400 right up to 1900. Now, if it's a small trade, you know, he can probably buy with a 1750 type of stop and Maybe if there is uh, good news, he can get 2150, 2200. But it's not really good for a positional trade because the 200-day moving average is at 1350. So for a positional trade, your stop is basically 200 DMA. But for a trade, it looks good. Uh, just consolidating uh, should have a fresh breakout at some point. Okay, uh, the next query is from Twitter user uh, Joshi, who's got 300 shares of LNT. Now, he bought these at a price of 940 rupees a piece, wants to know whether he should hold on or uh, cash out. So, Ashwini, he's made decent money on LNT. What's the view now? See, he can hold on, provided uh, he keeps a very modest uh, type of expectation. So, uh, next target here, once we can, uh, you know, consolidate above this 1190, 1200 zone, uh, should probably be closer to uh, 1300, 1350. So just some sideways move and it's finally showing some momentum. Uh, so around 1350, 1400 will be a good price to take some profit off. Uh, infrastructure overall is not uh, really picking up. So LNT is uh, having those one of those moves which uh, tend to happen from time to time. So uh, possibly 1300, 1350 is a nice target. Okay, uh, let's take one more then. We have. Uh... Mahabalesha with 300 shares of Ujjivan, bought at 336. Uh, Ashwini? You know, problem with these guys is that every second day there is some new problem which happens. You know, if I had a choice of all the NBFCs, obviously uh, MFIs are probably the last of the lot. Uh, since he's very close to his, uh, you know, purchase price, 
I won't mind even shifting to an LNT finance from these levels. But if, if he just wants to hold this one, you know, keep a 330 type of stop. And maybe if uh, its rally resumes, you could get uh, 400 odd. But MFIs, you know, uh, most of the time they uh, flatter to deceive. Okay, uh, moving on to the next one. This is Twitter user Shweta who has a question on REC. She's holding 500 shares, bought them at a price of 187 a piece. Wants some advice on what to do now. Actually, now she is losing money on REC, and this week was a bit of a stop start. I mean, there was that odd one day when there was a power rally. We thought maybe something's happening, but it fizzled out by Friday. What's your view? See, stocks should be like your employees. If your employee isn't working, fire him. So, uh, you know, uh, this, this is the worst NBFC you can have. A power plus PSU uh, NBFC, which doesn't go anywhere. Again, I would much rather get into a Bajaj Finance or an LNT Finance, uh, which are showing much better momentum. Okay, all right. It's um, an interesting analogy. <laughs> Fire your stock. Yeah, not working. Just out, out of the door. All right, Twitter user Rajan Mathur has a query on Dabur. He's holding uh, 200 shares. He ha we don't know the price, actually, so it makes uh, the answer really difficult. He wants a general view on how the Dabur stock structure is looking. Higher or higher on this one, Ashwini? See, it's not outperforming, but it's okay. I mean, you can hold with a stop, say, around 300 and maybe expect uh, targets closer to, say, 330, 335. But the better, uh, you know, FMCG stock is probably HUL. Uh, and if you still want to be with consumer, the best consumer stock is probably, again, Bajaj Finance. Yeah. So uh, that way, uh, a good, good way of looking at consumers is through these stocks. Also, you know, Johnson Controls, Whirlpool, etc. This is the season for them. So uh, if you want more excitement out of a consumer stock, probably uh, look at those plays. Okay, Ashmani, finally then, uh, do you think we'll have new highs on Nifty next week? See, even if it's not next week, I think by Diwali that should happen because people get overexcited for some reason. Maybe some sales, etc. will pick up. So better news will flow in. So by Diwali, we should be at new highs. I'm just wondering if Diwali is going to be cleaner in Delhi than last year. I remember being around Ashwin, it was quite a nightmare. But anyway, that's a conversation for later. For now, thank you so much for being with us. You have a good weekend. We will see you with the markets next week. That's a wrap on uh, this week's edition of Taking Stock. Many thanks for joining in. As Anuj and I take your leave, we'll leave you with some more very interesting market opinion that we got through the course of the week. September quarter, in my opinion, is a transitional quarter, and the transitional quarter is because the last year, September quarter, was a very good quarter, and uh, some of the follow-on disruptions from GST may still affect it, but it should start to show some improvement. But from the December quarter itself, which last year had the disruption from uh, uh, demonetization, uh, from that quarter onwards, and the GST effect of this year should be behind, and the positive shots to show up. With all of that. Uh, I, I feel very confident that not just double digit, but you know, we should be going into uh, in the second half of this fiscal year, maybe even mid teens kind of earnings growth, and then uh, you know, FI 19 uh, should uh, should continue to that trend. So, if I look at the charts and I sort of project, my studies tell me that we could almost almost have about a 70% move in the EM space in the next four to five years. But when I look at India and I project for India, a longer-term trend. See, I look at longer-term trends. I do not look at markets day-to-day -day basis. I think that we also are going to be an at par. We are going to have almost a 17,000 kind of nifty in the next four years.